Every country has overarching systems, standards, values, customs, roles, and rules. You don't necessarily have to follow those things. I mean, as long as you're not breaking the law. But most people accept these sorts of things about any given country. Or at least they used to. I mean, it's obviously important to know about these elements to a country so you can effectively and efficiently work within their constructs. Schools of thought that you often find in higher education, as well as it has been sneaked into our entertainment and media in general, claim that we shouldn't have to accept these things. That we can and should dismantle all of these things because they're oppressive. Now, I'm not going to argue that there aren't still some oppressive elements left that we could get rid of. Uh, we can always make improvements. But people don't want to do that. They, they want to just dismantle these systems altogether. That it won't cause significant issues to dismantle them without something solid to replace them. You know, that it won't significantly disrupt social order and cohesion. And that it's a good thing if we lose social order and cohesion. You know, because chaos promotes change. They, of course, don't word it quite that way, but that's pretty much the essence of what they're pushing. And a lot of this train of thought is even being taught in our public schools as well, including occasionally in elementary schools. I mean, what's wrong with this line of thinking is that it eventually leads to people not caring about the laws either. It makes people disconnected from why a lot of laws exist in the first place and why they should have to follow said laws. Especially in big cities, we are rapidly losing social order. You know, after COVID hit and we had all the lockdowns and everyone was afraid to gather in large numbers, and then there were the George Floyd riots, a growing part of society stopped caring about why some laws exist. I could say a little bit more about my thoughts on how COVID was handled, but uh, it's not a good idea on this platform, so. And it only seems to be getting worse as far as people not caring about why some laws exist. I mean, it's healthy to question that once in a while, but just the general rule of law when, when, that, when people just don't even care about that anymore, I mean, we're, we're in for some problems. And everything is getting unattainably expensive for so many people, you know, which obviously adds to this problem. Even here in Tacoma, it's getting bad. For example, at our local Fred Meyer here in Tacoma, because of rampant shoplifting, they usually have at least two security guards at each exit of the store, and they have to check everyone's receipts as they're leaving. To me, in my opinion, we need a set of forces that can bring social order back to the forefront. I don't know what those forces should come in the form of. It just seems that it would necessitate our getting more in touch and reconnecting with our country's systems, standards, values, customs, roles, and rules. But how do we achieve that? How do we invoke a sense of patriotism in people that want to dismantle the country. I worry we might be too late. I also worry that Republican attempts to invoke this sort of thing would come in the form of Christian nationalism. Who would be thrown in jail under Christian nationalism? How strict would it be? Would it eventually become a situation of concentration camps? Would people who speak against Christianity be punished? Would socialists be punished for promoting socialism? Would media be allowed to disagree with the administration? How far in that direction would we go under Christian nationalist rule? Or is it way more blown up than people think? Hard to say, but Project 2025 gives us a peek into some of it. But should we just give up and just continue to watch society deteriorate? Perhaps, in one way or another, maybe I am promoting nationalistic ideals, but they're not ethno-nationalistic. They're not Christian nationalists by any stretch. They're not sexual nationalists. They're not gender nationalists. I'm not pushing for one demographic to have more benefits and opportunities than any other demographic. I just want there to be a certain amount of social order and cohesion. Now, perhaps I'm attacking this from the wrong place. Maybe we can get social order and cohesion some other way. 
Or maybe perhaps I shouldn't push for social order and cohesion at all. I mean, perhaps we really do need more chaos in order to have more positive change. More drug overdoses, more needles and fecal matter on the sidewalks, more shoplifting and looting, more theft at gunpoint, more riots, more vandalism, more statues being torn down, more minority-run businesses shutting down, more carjackings, more random dangerous burnout sideshows. <laughs> yeah, we should just look at it as the kind of chaos that can bring forth positive change, right? Or we could pretend that over the past four years, none of those things are really that bad. It's overblown. It's hyperbole. You know, so stop making a mountain out of a molehill, right? I don't know, but I'm really saddened by what I'm seeing happen to Tacoma and Seattle. I mean, Seattle's worse, but still. At least I'm not in San Francisco, right? Big cities are not the place to be in this portion of this country's history, it seems. You know, but still, maybe I'm coming at this from the wrong place. I worry the most that this deterioration will get much, much worse if we have four more years of Biden. I mean, I don't think this country can withstand it. Interest rates, crime, people's sense of patriotism. I mean, there's no leadership. He can barely make his way off a stage. He doesn't know where he's going or what he's doing most of the time. He just says things that he's told to say. You know, we've constantly heard him say things like, oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to talk about it, I'm not supposed to this, or I'm not supposed to that. And we don't know who's telling him what to say. We have no idea who is actually running the country. And it becomes more and more apparent as time goes on. That's not good for the morale of the citizens. Certainly doesn't make someone want to be patriotic, you know? What I worry about with Trump is the likeliness that he'd fall in line with Project 2025 which is essentially a 900-page Christian nationalist playbook for the Republican Party and Trump to implement. So it just kind of seems like we're going to have to choose between becoming a shithole country with sky-high crime or potentially becoming a Christian nationalist country. Oh, what great times we have ahead of us, right? Let me know how you feel about this in the comments. Thanks.